Let me ask you a question. Can you tell the difference between this motion sensor and this one? Probably not because you're a normal human, not like me who's looking at motion sensors all day. The difference between this sensor here and this sensor here is this sensor is a pet friendly motion sensor, whereas this is a normal motion sensor. A question I get asked a lot is, am I able to have a security system if I have pets? With pets getting left in the house and things like that, people are worried about them moving about, triggering the alarm, and it going off all the time, annoying the neighbors, always pinging up on their phone, and it's a real concern. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what pet friendly motion sensors are, how they work, and if it's a good fit for you in your home or business security setup. The first thing we've got to go through is just how motion sensors actually work. Just a basic overview so you understand what's going on inside the sensor. Essentially, what these sensors do is shoot out beams into the room that they're in or if it's external, they're shooting out beams into the area that they're in. Now, when an object that emits heat crosses those beams, it triggers to the sensor that it's seen movements and will therefore trigger an alarm. And how it knows if it's actually seen movements is it's looking for infrared light. Objects that give off a lot of infrared light are say humans, it's given off through our heat. The sensor can see that heat source and trigger the alarm. What else gives off heat? Well, your pets. So it stands to reason that if your pet is moving around an area with a motion sensor in that area protecting it, the sensor is going to see the movement and it's going to trigger the alarm. So that's where things get a bit different between an ordinary motion sensor and a pet friendly motion sensor. So to explain that in better detail, I'm going to bring you around here to this lovely diagram that I've drawn and hopefully I'll be able to show you more about it so you can understand exactly what's happening. Let's go. So here we are guys, here are my lovely diagrams, one showing a normal motion sensor, PIR, and one showing a pet friendly PIR. So I'll go over the normal one first and then we can go over the pet friendly one so you can understand the difference. It's shooting out its beams into this room here. Now when an object crosses one of these beams, whether it be here, whether it be here, and this can be an object of uh, you know anything because it's a normal PIR, it's going to see the movement in the room because it's going to see the heat source crossing the beams, trigger the alarm. Simple as that. That's how it works. Now, when you actually get into the sensor of how the internal parts of the sensor works, that gets really complicated and actually starts to become to do with things like crystals. I know, sounds crazy. It is true. I will go over that in another video on the intricate details of how a motion sensor works. Next, we go over to pet friendly PIR. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is there are a lot more beams that are shooting out from the motion sensor. That's because the lens of the pet friendly PIR is different to the normal PIR. So what it's doing here, instead of just shooting out, say, four beams across a room like it is in the normal one here, it's shooting out several beams going down low. The reason for that is if an object only crosses, say, two of these beams, now this is, you're gonna laugh at me from a drawing, I can't draw, but I'm gonna just try and draw, what, a stick dog, I guess. So, um, there we go. It almost looks like the human centipede, oh my God. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that this is a dog with horns, I guess. Um, and as you can see, this weird looking dog is crossing two beams. Now, the dog can only cross two beams at a time not to scale, but let's just take for instance, because of the size of the object, it can only cross two beams at a time. Therefore, the system knows to ignore that because it can't be a human, it's only intruding on two beams. Therefore, it's not big enough to be a human. Because a human being, if we imagine, was standing up, it would be here. And look how many zones they're crossing here. A human, one, two, three, for five different beams across here is seeing the human. Therefore, it knows this is a much bigger object and to trigger. Now, there are some caveats to a pet-friendly PIR. Let's say this dog is 30 kg. It means it should just about be okay within that range and the pet-friendly PIR will know not to trigger if it's seeing an object that weighs 30 kilograms. Now, obviously the human will weigh a lot more, I'm um, 95 kg myself, so we'll put that there. Right, and what this means is when it comes to the weight, because a lot of people say 
oh well, what if I just uh, put on a dog costume and got down really low and crouched so that I don't actually go over too many beams, would I then be able to burgle a house? No. Remember what we said about the pet friendly motion sensor and the motion sensor, they're looking for infrared light in the form of heat. So a dog that's only 30 kilograms will give off nowhere near as much infrared light as I will considering I'm over three times the weight. If, even if I crouch down, to be really small in here and I'm only crossing a couple of beams which is still pretty much impossible for a fully grown human the sensor can see the amount of infrared light that I'm giving out because that won't have changed and it will know to trigger the alarm so no someone crawling along the floor cannot burgle your house because the sensor will still trigger if anything over around 30 kgs worth of heat is giving off that much light so those two things combined make these sensors absolutely excellent. I've been installing these for years and honestly, they're really good, really bulletproof. Now, one thing worth remembering, if when they were installed, your dog was 30 kilograms, but then because you're feeding it too many biscuits, it becomes 40 kg, that will be out of the range and the pet friendly PAR will still trigger seeing that dog because the dog is giving off more infrared light in the form of heat. There are some ways in which a pet friendly sensor will still not work correctly. Let's give you an example. Now, if you have an animal that gets right on top of the sensor, the sensor, it's too close, it can't determine the amount of infrared light it's given off and it's blocking every single beam because it's right on top of the sensor. Let's say for instance, you have a cupboard and you've placed that cupboard right underneath the sensor and you've got a cat that jumps onto the cupboard and is walking right in front of it. It's still gonna trigger the alarm. So sensor placement is very important when it comes to your pet friendly PIRs. Also, if you have more than one dog, let's say you have two or three dogs and they're left in the lounge, and they start having a you know a play fight as they do. All of a sudden, when that sensor's looking at that object, it seems three times as large because they're all on top of each other and they're giving off loads of infrared light because of the heat source being three times what a normal dog would be that will still trigger the alarm. So there are a few issues that you need to just bear in mind. Now, to be honest, in my own personal experience, I've never really had a problem with multiple dogs being left and then the, scent, the system being set. It's always been fine. I've never had that issue, but it is something worth bearing in mind. A major thing that does need bearing in mind is sensor placement, like I said, about the cat jumping on, say, the bookshelf or the, you know, the wardrobe and going right in front of the sensor. That's something people often miss, but that will really, will be your only problem. As the years have gone on, they've got better and better and better and can deal with larger and larger dogs. But we're at about the limit now, around 30 to 35 kilograms. On the Guardfather security system, the DIY security system that I've released, it's actually 35 kilograms that we can manage when it comes to the pet friendly sensors. I advertise it as 30 just to give that little bit of leeway because sometimes people don't like to admit that their pet's a little bit fatter than they are. Maybe you'd be interested in seeing a smart home security install. If so, click here.